Okay, this is what gravity does. It takes a big molten mass and it pulls it together into a ball. That's what they say. And everything would be tethered to the center of the ball. That's the origin of where gravity is. Okay, kind of like this. So the surface would be completely uh, slippery, right? Let's say it's like a, a non-friction surface. This ball is free to move all over the ball. It can move around it in any direction, right? As, and everything is tethered, like, to the center. That's where gravity pulls. But now, remember this video I showed. And by the way, I haven't had one taker say that they're going to uh, take an airplane or a helicopter or anything and, and uh, fix to the background stars and watch the ground rotate out from under them or get hit by ever-increasing rotating atmosphere. Uh, nobody's taken me up on that, of course, because it exposes that this is a lie. It's a complete fraud. Bob tried to straw man me and say, um, he doesn't even know how airplanes navigate. They navigate by the ground. A duh, dummy. I said, in this case, navigate by the stars. This is going to be a, you got to think out of the box a little bit there, Bob. All right. And then you would see that your spinning ball is a hoax. Also, nobody took me up on this one from the uh, My Mountain Shadow series, where I said, somebody show me one photo taken from the peak of the mountain that shows the shadow of the mountain cast on the underside of clouds above the mountain. But of course, nobody will ever be able to show that because it doesn't exist. The sun is always higher than the peaks of the mountain and therefore casts a shadow on top of the clouds. Okay, now let me back this up. Now notice... Notice that the ground is, is turning. See this? This is a turn. Okay, let's look at this. I took this ball and take this and turn it on its side. Now look at this. Let's say this is uh, 10, 20 degrees north latitude. See that turning to the left? The, I tried to make the ground somewhat level. It has to turn to the left. Water cannot turn. You know, unless, of course, it's in a container that's a curved container or it's in a whirlpool or something like that but not on a rotating ball, right? So this is a water-covered ball. It can't turn. So what mechanism is in place to make this water turn to the left, especially uh, deep water, right? Very uh, fluid. What's going to make it turn? Nothing. So once you start the rotation around this axis, the water is going to want to go straight, right? Because the gravity point is in the center. Now, if gravity was here at the pole, then sure, you could say, well, the water is going to rotate around this pole right here. But gravity is not located at the, at the ground at the North Pole. And the centrifugal force of rotation is going to cause the water to move perpendicular to the pole. So the water is going to go out straight and curve over the hump of the Earth vertically. In the spinning ball model, gravity is in the center of the Earth, right? Like this. And so everything would be te tethered to the center. So you can't, water cannot turn on a spinning ball. It can't turn with the rotating ball. The water is going to want to go straight because an object in motion tends to stay in motion. And there's nothing tethering it to the pole. And the rotating ball causes centrifugal force, and that force is perpendicular to the pole. Right? So it's going to push everything out perpendicular to the pole. Right? So it's not going to turn around the North Pole there. It's going to want to move down, and it's going to slide down the ball to the equator. I mean, this is the physics of a spinning ball. We all know this. Look at this tennis ball. As it spins, the water goes to the equator and flies off. All the water moves down to the equator, just like I showed with the spinning rubber ball soaked in blue water and this balloon. The spin creates the, makes the water slide down to the equator and spin off. Now, the water leaving is what creates the bulge in this water balloon next to it. So, and I, as I said in another video, where's the antecedent for the bulge? If we supposedly have a 14-mile-high bulge, everything should be moved to the equator, right? Moving, where is it? We don't see it. All right, now, again, in, in this example, the ever-increasing speeds at which the ground is rotating, this is water. Two, moving, 100 mile per hour, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1,000 thousand miles per hour. Water, making a left turn. The only place it's not making a left turn would be the equator. Because it would be like this. All of these are turning like a merry-go-round. And the equator would be turning like a Ferris wheel.
that would be up and over, right? But um, so there's no turn, it's a straight line, but everything else is turning to the left, except obviously south of the equator on a spinning ball, everything would be turning to the right. Okay, on a ball, everything would have to turn and, and yet nothing can turn. It was like I showed, unless gravity is located at the pole, right, like here, unless gravity is located right here and is going to pull this, all these waters around the pole, but that's not how it works. So water can't turn. Water's got to move, like I showed with this one. The, uh, the ball is free to move everywhere. Water is going to slide down the ball because now you're, you're taking a ball like this that's not rotating and just has gravity. Everything's free to move around the ball. But once you add the rotation and the centrifugal force moves everything perpendicular to the pole, right? So everything's going to move out and away from the pole. And again, I'm not talking about a little shallow water on the ground that would, yeah, that would turn with the ground. I'm talking about water stacked on water, like thick depths of water, like the oceans and lakes, the water would slide down. So, and as I've shown in this other um, clip, see this, this is the, this is these yellow lines are the uh, centrifugal force. That's, this would be the pole, the axis of rotation. Gravity points this way. So in all of these, the water is going to slide this way. The water is going to slide this way. Now, this isn't my model. They say this. They say that the rotation is causing a uh, flattening of the poles and a bulge 14 miles all the way around the equator, 14 miles high. It's like it says here in Wikipedia. Uh, the Earth's equatorial bulge has been decreasing in step with the decrease in the rate of rotation. That means that the size of the bulge is tied to the speed of the rotation. And so this is now, this is happening now on the earth. This is what they say. Now, uh, they love to straw man you and say, that's one rotation in 24 hours. Look at the hour hand on a 24 hour clock. Do you think that looks like it's moving fast? Would you feel that? Well, no. But what they neglect to tell you is that at the end of the hour hand, which is 4,000 miles, it's moving at a thousand miles per hour. Right? So, that's a straw man number one. The other straw man is where they say, well, it's only 14 miles high compared to an 8,000 mile diameter ball, right? Well, no, we're talking about ground and dirt and rock has bulged upwards 14 miles all the way around the equator, all right? What do you think the water's going to do? You know that the average depth of the oceans is like two to three miles, the deepest part of any ocean, I think, is the Mariana Trench, and they say it's like six or seven miles deep. But let's just look at the, the average depth of oceans, two to three miles. Here you're talking a 14-mile bulge. What do you think would be the, the e most easily moved, rock, dirt, or water? Well, the water is going to be piled up 14 miles. Now, that's significance compared to two or three-mile uh, deep oceans. OK, this is completely busted, completely a fraud. Uh, yeah, I know us in the Flat Earth community, we're, we're getting that, but uh, the world needs to get this. This is a joke. So let me just reiterate a rotating sphere. Once you start this ball rotating, this water would have to keep rotating to keep equilibrium as we observe in our real world. Right. Water would have to stay put, but it's not going to do that. It's not going to turn. There's nothing to make it turn. There's no mechanism to make it turn. Gravity is at the center of the ball. As I showed here. Gravity's here and everything's tethered, so it's going to go. Now, if if gravity were tethered here, if, if the water was tethered to the pole right here, then sure, you could make the argument that it's going to go around the pole, but it's not tethered there. So that's not how it works. Okay? The water would immediately try to go straight. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. The water is going to try to go straight and it's going to come down and everything's going to crash at the equator, kind of like this. Okay, so somebody tell me how the water would keep turning to the left, right? If you're if you're in a boat right here, you see you got to turn left to follow this course. How is the water going to turn left? It's not tethered to the pole. There's gravity's not pulling it this way to the center of this. It's pulling it here. 
And as I showed, there's no equilibrium. The only place where gravity is pulling in and uh, centrifugal force is pulling out, so it kind of offsets each other, is here. But obviously, centrifugal force has clearly won the battle because it's bulging 14 miles out in the way of centrifugal force. Gravity's losing that one, right? So everything would have to move. Plus, this is pulling, right? Creating a vacuum. If everything moves out, all this stuff's going to want to fill in and follow it. The other thing is that you can see gravity is at an angle to centrifugal force. So if if this were the gravity direction, right? If it were if gravity were the pole, then you could say, yeah, the water would rotate around the pole. If the pole were the source of gravity, the water would rotate around that gravity pole. But gravity's here. And as I showed with this little um, demonstration, it's it will it's free to move just like an ice skater doing a figure eight around on the ice. Gravity may hold us to the ground. It, let's say gravity's true for a minute, but it doesn't stop you from moving freely in any direction, right? On, an ice skater can do a nice leisurely figure eight right all over the ice, no problem. We can walk. You can get up and walk around any direction you want. So what's going to make the water turn is the question. What would make the water turn to the left right here? What's going to make it turn and not just run? Like if you're spinning a, a, a rock at the end of a string, you let go of the rock, it's going to fly straight. There's, there's no string holding it or tethering it to this pole right here. It's only to the center. And when it's tethered to the center, the water goes, slides down, slides anywhere around the ball. And in the case of centrifugal force would be, is pushing out, right, at a perpendicular to the pole, and gravity's pulling this way into the center, water is going to slide down because that angle is set up. Okay, so you would never see scenes like this on a spinning ball earth with dead still lakes and ponds, you know, as long as there's no wind blowing, of course. Beautiful still pictures like this. It can't happen on a spinning ball. The spinning ball is a fraud. And there's your wrecked ball. Really, with this right here, water cannot turn. There's nothing, there's no mechanism to make it turn. And that's it. All right, thank you so much. If you haven't bought a t-shirt, go ahead and get one. This is me and my premium tea, pea brain shirt. Awesome. Uh, check it out. There's a link in the description. All right, everybody. Talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Uh, don't forget to hit the thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.